Continuing the what's on my iPad series, I wanna talk about my creative apps. These are the apps I use to make my video projects, photography work, graphic design stuff, and more. This video is sponsored by PGY Tech. Let's get into it. The first app I wanna talk about was key for me to coming back to the iPad full time, and that is Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Since its introduction, I have sold my Mac and I am 100% back on the iPad. I do not have a Mac in my home or office anymore. Now this is very much a version 1.0. We've got a few updates here and there that have brought some really key features, but when it was introduced, it was very much a 1.0. It was starting from scratch. Apple didn't just port the Mac version over and go, hey, hope it works fine. They built it from the ground up, designed for the iPad. Now that means there is a lot of low hanging fruit, but I can get my videos edited to the quality that I want and that is key. What I really like about Final Cut, other than its performance, its performance is kind of just above and beyond, especially compared to something like Premiere Pro, but I really like the magic timeline. It makes sense for my brain. Clips go to work together. They are in a sequence. You can just drag and drop and move things around. Now, Final Cut Pro for the iPad does have a few key specific features that the Mac version doesn't. The first is the jog wheel. This is a way to scroll through your timeline when you're in tablet mode. When you have a trackpad paired, it probably is just easier to use a trackpad, but when you're in tablet mode and you're just using the iPad as a tablet, this makes it a lot easier to move through your timeline. You can also select a clip and then use the nudge tool. This will allow you to move a clip a frame at a time or speed through the timeline. In the clip library, you can select a clip, use the jog wheel to move through it and set in and out points for that clip. Another feature is creating animations with the Apple Pencil. This can be animating arrows to point something out, handwriting text drawing in, and more. This is a really powerful feature and the biggest bummer for me because I have terrible handwriting. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend Final Cut Pro for the iPad is perfect. There are a few really big issues for me. The biggest one right now is creating user presets for effects. So back on the Mac, one day I sat down and I created a bunch of custom animations, text templates, color grades, all that stuff to really help me speed through my editing because 99% of the videos I make are filmed in this room or some studio room that I've used in the past. But on the iPad version, you can't create those presets. So to get around this, what I did is I actually created a text document in Obsidian with all of the different things that I do and all of the settings for them. So this way I can just open up Obsidian next to Final Cut and I can just copy those setting changes over. And that way I can make sure every single one of my videos is uniformed and looks consistent. You're not getting a wildly different color grade in each different video. You know, text templates are the same. Things look uniform throughout my videos. Now there are a few other features I would love to see come to Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Post-production stabilization, optical flow, third-party LUT support, the ability to take an effect and apply it to multiple clips at once, or select multiple clips and delete an effect, non-HDR Rec 2020, and the ability to create custom keyboard shortcuts. Now we got a couple of really nice updates last year and I'm excited to see what's coming in the future. I don't think Final Cut Pro for the iPad is done. It's very clear that Apple is still working on it and is still pushing it. So I'm excited for that. The newest app in this category for me is Procreate Dreams. The best way to think about this app is it's After Effects, but with a focus on animation and design for the iPad. Now, again, this is another one of those apps that's very much a 1.0. It was built from scratch. There was nothing that it was building off of. So there's not a ton here, especially if you're like me and you can't draw. But the direction of this app is really interesting and it's been something that I've been playing with a lot. You can import a base video or photo layer, add some text or draw an animation on top of that, and then keyframe effects. 
Now, what sets Procreate Dreams apart from the Final Cut Apple Pencil tools is Procreate Dreams lets you animate frame by frame. And when you go through this animation process, it shows a, a kind of a ghost image or a shadow of the previous frame. So that way you can animate on top of that and you can animate your movements properly. This, I feel, is the most powerful piece in Procreate Dreams right now. One, I would love to just up my drawing skills and be able to do complex animations in this app and bring them into my videos. I, I'm really hoping the Procreate team really embraces that idea of this being After Effects, for, but for the iPad, designed around the iPad, where animation and creation is kind of the core concept. This video is sponsored by PGY Tech and their new OneGo Solo version 2 bag. These are new sling bags perfect for carrying your camera gear and other equipment around. They come in three different sizes, a four liter perfect for a one camera and lens setup and even an iPad mini, a six liter if you would like to pack a second lens and maybe a small iPad, or a 10 liter for having a two camera and two lens setup and even your 14 inch laptop or 12.9 inch iPad Pro. The inside of the bags are completely adjustable, so you know you can get your camera gear to fit perfectly inside. There are a ton of different pockets, so you can fit SD card cases, extra batteries, and more. What I like about these slings is it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of your bag to grab your gear when you're walking around. That's something I've always struggled with with backpacks. These are really comfortable to walk around with. They have adjustable strap and a carry handle. They're even scratch resistant and splash proof. You can even strap a tripod to the bottom of them. And on the six and 10 liter version, there's even a place to put your water bottle. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to where you can go check them out. My thanks to PGY Tech for sponsoring this video. Ferrite is my audio editing app. Now, what separates Ferrite out from something like Logic is Ferrite was built for spoken word audio, like long form spoken word audio, like podcast. You can make stuff like that work in Logic, but it's really designed for music. It really wants you to make music in Logic and Ferrite really wants you to do like long form spoken word audio. With Ferrite, you can both record and edit audio. What I like about this is you have a lot of control for both processes. For recording, you can get really specific about the file type, including 32-bit lossless files. When editing, you have tools like Strip Silence. This way, if you have any bits where nobody is talking, this will automatically cut those out and delete that blank audio for you. Then you can use the Titan tool to bring everything closer together. This speeds up an edit. I really wish Final Cut would get tools like this. Ferrite has excellent support for both keyboard shortcuts and the Apple Pencil. So no matter which way you're editing, you can speed through the timeline. Ferrite is kind of designed for podcasts and I don't have a podcast right now, but what I do use this for is a lot of VO work. So sometimes I will miss something in my script and need to go back and re-record something. I'll use Ferrite for that because I don't want to set up camera gear. It won't look the same. So I just do use VO and then cover it up with B-roll. Or in some cases like my iPad OS walkthroughs, that's mostly all voiceover work and I use b-roll to cover up everything. Lightroom is my second most used creative app. I love photography. It has just become an absolute passion of mine over the last couple of years. I like to take nice photos for my thumbnails for videos, but I also do a lot of landscape photography as well, in which a lot of those photos I have turned into wallpaper packs, link in the description below. Lightroom is where I edit all of my photos. I tried other photo editing apps like Pixelmator Photo and Darkroom. And while both of these apps are great and they're native iPad apps, which is something Lightroom is not, I just like the controls in Lightroom and the, the output that I'm getting, the finished product that I'm getting from Lightroom is better or maybe I'm just more used to it. One of my favorite features in Lightroom is the subject detect for masking. This will pick out the subject and let you just edit that area. Then what you can do is you can also invert that mask and just edit the background. I do this a lot with my thumbnails to make that photo pop. I've also built a few presets for myself to kind of speed up my edits. 
Now there's a new lens blur tool in Lightroom as well. This will detect the subject and give you control over how blurry the background should be. Maybe you weren't able to shoot at a low enough f-stop during production, or you just don't have a lens that can go that low. This gives you the ability to make that subject pop from the background. Now, the thing that bugs me about Lightroom for the iPad is the lack of keyboard shortcut support. There are a few, but nowhere near as many as the Mac app. And that's just disappointing. Like, I don't know why Adobe is so like anti-iPad app. And here's the thing, Lightroom is hands down their best like mobile app on, on the iPhone and the iPad. Lightroom is hands down their best one. So it's, it's really disappointing to see them leave out key features like that. Photoshop for the iPad got a very well-deserved reputation as a stripped down version. Adobe, they didn't do a great job at porting Photoshop over a few years ago and have done an even worse job at updating it and adding those desktop features. Like it's, it's missing the pen tool. How are you missing the pen tool? And throughout the whole app, you're gonna see messages saying like certain features aren't supported yet. But that being said, I got very lucky in that all the tools that I need and use in Photoshop are there. And I have two main uses for Photoshop. I don't use Photoshop for like my, my landscape photography or anything like that. I just use it for thumbnails for YouTube. So first I use Photoshop to replace the screens on the devices that I shoot for thumbnails. A lot of times with like the lights and stuff in my office, you'll get glare on the screen or it just won't be sharp enough or something like that. So what I'll do is when I take a thumbnail is I will use a green background and I will take a screenshot of whatever I want to be on the screen for the thumbnail. I'll throw it in Lightroom, use the magic wand tool, delete the green screen, and then put it in the screenshot of whatever I want on the iPad. It doesn't take very long, it's extremely fast, works great. Then the other thing I do is even more simple. It's just add text. I don't add a ton of text to my thumbnails, but every once in a while, I might just wanna point something out in a thumbnail and I'll just use text for that. It's really easy. I'm glad Photoshop has the ability to put text in photos because if they wouldn't have done that, ugh, who knows? Now, a big reason why I use Photoshop is the way I pay for Lightroom includes Photoshop and one terabyte of cloud storage. And Lightroom and Photoshop actually work really well together. So in Lightroom, there's the ability to send your photo over to Photoshop and vice versa. And it keeps it nice high quality image. So that way things aren't getting compressed and stuff like that. I can just send it over. It's still the like nice high quality photo image that I took. I can make my Photoshop edits and then export the thumbnail. Pastel is an app I use for design. This is a color palette app. What I like about this is you can see how different colors work together. When I designed my drafts and obsidian theme, I used this to kind of see how the colors would play together and I kind of organized them in a way. Then I could just go through and copy and paste the hex color codes where I needed them to go. I also use this for Final Cut a lot. When picking a color, I can use the eyedrop tool in Final Cut and then select something from pastel. This way I can keep all of my color themes the same throughout all of my videos and things look consistent. If you work with a specific color palette or do any kind of brand work, this is a must have app. You can build out the palette so you can have all the colors ready to go. You can just copy the hex codes. You can see how they play together. It's really nice. Freeform has been a surprise for me. I've been using it a lot lately. Right now, the big thing I'm using it out for is planning the next iteration of my office. I've always had a rush to get my office set up, but now I'm taking my time and kind of really planning out what this is going to look like. I'm using Freeform to map out the office, save colors for paint, link to furniture. This is really just letting me take my time for my next office setup. This is also a really great tool for any kind of collaboration. If you do any sort of group work, teamwork, any of that kind of thing, highly recommend checking out Freeform. So that's it, those are my creative apps. I wanna hear from you all. What are your creative apps that you use on your iPad? My thanks to PGY Tech for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.